You died two weeks before Mother's Day. Your sense of humor was always a little bit twisted that way. I was 19, which is just over the age where people say you're too young. There are less heroics at 19, fewer excuses, so I worked on the holiday, and the owner of the bakery told me you'll have the dreams, you know. For so long, I did not dream of you, but I kept waiting too. I kept waiting for you. For so long, I forgot what it meant to be angry with you. I just knew that I had. I can remember the dishes shattered in the kitchen, but I can't remember the sound. But I remember exactly how you told me. We were parked in your car in the driveway with the engine turned off, but the radio on. We were listening to that Casablanca song as time goes by. You sighed at the steering wheel and not at me then said, this would make a great first dance at a wedding someday. And you'll all say, God, I wish mom was here. That was how you told me. I miss, I miss the way that you took your coffee constantly, how you'd misplace each cup somewhere, leave it abandoned on a bookshelf or halfway up the stairs, and I would open the microwave to find the mug abandoned, cold. Where at some point you'd plan to reheat it, told it that you'd return in five minutes. You used to do that thing, you know, where you'd say, just five more minutes, and I knew that that would mean hours. When you asked just 20 minutes more, I knew that it meant forever. Just tell me that you're gone for 20 minutes. And someone... <laughs> and did you know that the birds still spoke like you? They sang me good morning every day in your coup. Eventually, they stopped too. And they all flew away. Just tell me that they're with you. And someone sent me a bottle of your perfume, Shalimar. It's spilled open in a box I have that's filled with all your scarves, and I can still map out the constellations where all your freckles were. Turn right here. There's nothing left for you there. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. I could still give direction around the dirt roads of your scars, even the last ones, where they took the lymph nodes, the veins, all the soft parts of you. By then it was hard to notice anyway. You'd stopped eating and all the soft parts of you had flown away. The cancer, do you remember when the birds had babies? I mean, of course you do, or like, of course you don't, but Remember how you warned me they're really ugly cute? They're kind of like little aliens. <laughs> All hunger and hard edges until they grow in their first feathers, those little bits of gray fuzz. The cancer turned you into this, into my small baby bird. The chemo wreaked havoc on your skin, on your nerves, and do you... Well, you don't remember, but Dad went out one day and he bought you these insanely expensive sheets made of Egyptian cotton in a bright shade of burnt orange, and we wrapped you in the color of prayer, of Buddhist monks of flame like some sleepy phoenix reborn. In beds of ash and bone, the glow of questions that I never asked and a frozen look of pain. The embers settled all along the outside of your frame and they sent someone in to take your body away. We all gathered in your garden where they'd asked us to stay because evidently it can be difficult for some to see. And I can only assume that they put your body into a bag, that they took you out of those sheets because they scattered your feathers all along their path. Oh. Whoa. Not much anyway, besides, your arms are collapsing. Slowly, let your shoulders fall first. Smack your palms against the price tags. Clasp your fingers to the shelf. Feel your knees give out focus. Count, tell me how many cans of black beans are left. 
desperate. Dig your nails into the red sticker of a discount claw at the adhesive as you descend, as it tears, as you end up on the floor, stare up at the rows of cans and decide you sort of like it here for in the car. Preferably when on a long drive to nowhere, anywhere that requires empty highways and moonlight. Oh, the glory of it, the wind and the sky. Don't look back. Drive into a thunderstorm, the rattle of raindrops heavy on the rooftop, relentless, terrifying, yet seemingly appropriate. Drive under an underpass and just for a moment, it stops and realize that's what her embrace is, was. Five, cry in New York City. Stand in awe of its beauty, of all its spilled coffee, of the missed connection on the subway. Cry into the boxes and bags you took on your journey. Gasp at the gorgeous of it, even the worst of it outside of your grandfather's apartment in the rain. It has soaked through your coat, through your shirt. Call your sister Emily and tell her I'm standing in my first real New York City thunderstorm and I can see her. I can see mom. Six. Leaning over your kitchen sink. Something about the washing away of things brings it out in people. The sobbing. It brings it out in you too. The prune fingers of reality. Not that you have, have the energy to wash a damn thing, namely your hair. So when the neighbor offers to help you decline, that was so very sweet of them, and wash away the bowls of food that she won't eat anymore. Seven. On the first of the hard days, the nurse from hospice arrives. She's an angel. Her laughter is the sound of church bells. She will give you pamphlets systematically designed to explain the stages, the symptoms, the best ways to manage pain, the exponential rates of decay, what to expect when you're expiring. The well of sorrow within your bones spills. The angel helps you clean it off the tile. She shows you the proper way to slice a mango. It will be the last thing your mother eats. The pamphlets do not warn you. Eight, grief is not a cycle. It is a rolling ball followed by a running child. And you've made it to the final days. Her skin is blotchy, her breathing is raspy. On and off flickering, your handbook tells you that this is the end of things. Loved ones crowd into her bedroom, whispering the ringing of telephones. Any moment now, she'll be gone. Minutes stretch like days when counted out in drops of morphine. They wash a setting sun across the evening. You fall asleep miraculously, and she waits for you until the morning. Your brother will wake you. You find your friend Maddie collapsed in the hallway, her face in her hands, her palms spitting steam, and that's when you know she's gone. In a spare moment, when her body is alone, whisper, check if any of her is still in there. Cut off a lock of her gray hair. Hold her and tell her to just let go. Now it's your turn to. Wow. <laughs>